the investment bank. What did I learn from coaching? In my job as an executive coach, I don't get paid one cent if my clients don't get better. Better is not judged by me, better is not judged by my client, better is judged by everyone around my client. By the way, there's a great way to test if someone believes what they're saying. You can ask a person one question and instantly determine if they believe what they're saying. This question never fails. What is the simple question? Want to bet on it? Want to bet on it? They say, I believe it, but I don't want to bet on it. You know what you learned? They don't believe it. They say, here's the money. They believe it. I bet on this every time. Like you, I get paid for results. And I'm sure as you've learned as an entrepreneur, when you get paid for results, you learn some humility. The client I coached that I spent the most amount of time with did not improve at all, and I did not get paid. The client I coached that I spent the least amount of time with improved more than anyone I ever coached. Hundreds of people got better, and I did get paid. For those of you with a background in mathematics, I made a chart. On one dimension, it was called time spent with Marshall Goldsmith. The other dimension was called improvement. There was a clear negative correlation between spending time with me and getting better. Well, I thought, that's a troubling chart. I go talk to my client who improved the most, who I spent the least amount of time with, who was fantastic to start with, who was ranked this year as the number three greatest leader in the world in Fortune magazine, behind only the Pope and Angela Merkel. His name is Alan Mulally. Alan just retired as the CEO of the Ford Motor Company, a spectacular guy. The stock went from one to 17. And he did not take one cent of our United States government taxpayer dollars. A little round of applause for this guy. I go talk to my friend Alan. I said, Alan, of all the people I coached, you improved the most, and I spent the least amount of time with you. I showed Alan my chart. I said, Alan, the way this troubling chart looks, had you never met me, you would really be good. <laughs> I, th I then asked Alan, what should I learn about coaching from you? Now, he taught me two lessons, which I'm now going to share with you. If you don't understand anything else today but these two lessons, you're going to have a happier life and you'll be a better coach. He said, Marshall, lesson number one, your biggest challenge as a coach is called customer selection. If you pick the right customer, your coaching process always works. If you pick the wrong customer, your coaching process never works. And he said, two, don't make the coaching process about yourself and your own ego and how smart you are. Make it about the great people you work with, how hard they work, and how proud you are of them. Then he said, as the CEO of Ford, my job isn't that different. He said, I don't design the cars, I don't build the cars, I don't sell the cars. I gotta have great people. And he said, when I drive to work every day, I tell myself, leadership's not about me, leadership is about them. For you as an entrepreneur, that's one of your greatest challenges. For the great achiever, it's all about me. And for the great leader, it's all about them. One of the greatest challenges for an entrepreneur is to understand that. That is a very, very difficult transition. Most of us never deeply understand these points.